Hey guys, so I forgot to basically advertise this uh, eBay auction for the Burnt Umber Pickout from last week. Uh, it's of Paul McCartney. It's on a 9x12 canvas board. And currently, uh, with two days and 20 hours left, it's still sitting at $1. There's a couple of watchers and uh, quite a bit of uh, views. But um, yeah, I haven't, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't advertise it in the videos uh, beforehand. So I think it's uh, stalling right now, which is gonna be really good for whoever picks it up because I think it's gonna go for pretty cheap. So take a look if you can, I'll put the link below. You can probably pick this up for pretty cheap, so uh, check it out. And again, I think the auction is going to end on Wednesday at 8.43. So thanks guys, bye. Okay, so let's start off as always with the circle. And looking for the cross of the face, starting with the brow line. And having found that, now let's go down the center line of the face. And then let's look for the hairline, which is pretty close to very very top of the head let me make that a little bit further up because we're seeing more of the forehead in this perspective than we would if he was looking straight at us uh, the bottom of the nose would be somewhere on this line and then the chin would be about right here and then of course the top of the hair would be somewhere like so. So I'm just going to sketch that forehead and then we're going to come down to the brow right here and then bring that rhythm all the way over to the other side. And then we can make our little glabella shape, little wedge shape between the eyebrows. And now I'm going to find that angle of the bridge of the nose. And you can see the tip of the nose in relationship to this eye socket, this far side eye socket, is about right here. At least in his drawing. And then, let's see. So that's a, the center line right here. Then his nostril comes down to about right there and it looks I can't really tell in this drawing but it seems to me like you can see a little bit of the far side um, nostril but I can't quite tell let's put it in the nostril here I'm just gonna make like a little indication of that plane change the underside of the nose some structure to the nose with that, that big cartilage, the dome of the nose. Okay. So here we also have, again, that side plane change of the head. Almost like you sliced off the side of the ball of the head. And then coming down, so we have this angle for the brow, and then we hit this edge, and then this comes down like so. And then we cut that in half, and then half again. I don't really need this part of the rhythm. Just really the, the main point is getting this rhythm right here, because you often see that in um, mid-tones and, and, and uh, form shadows. Okay, so then let's get the chin. And the underside. So let's go ahead and place the ears. It's 
probably about right there and the top of the ear is actually about right here if I go straight across let me check the bottom portion of the ear that's actually way low so this line is off and it's actually angled more dramatically than I had it originally. Yeah. So when I check my line, so that's a good way to check to make sure your ears are lined up right. It's not only thinking about the angles, but also checking them. So what I did was I held my pencil up to the bottom of the ear, making a, a horizontal line going across the face and then identifying where it crosses. And then I came, I found that point and then came across on, on the drawing and found it. So the top of the ear was right about the nostril, came right across. And if I draw, draw this angle and check that, that's exactly what I was supposed to do. But earlier, I did an angle that was more like that, and it threw the ears off. And I just double-checked it by making that horizontal line. And then, now we found the correct angle. And then his jawline comes out, curves around. Then the underside. back of the head and the overall hair shape so we come around that corner come down come around again and let's bring that over a little bit And you get that sideburn. Now for the mouth. So we're on the cylinder of the mouth and it's wrapping around like this. So let's think of the mouth kind of wrapping around the cylinder and the glabella comes down here. Actually a little different. Let's come back. I wasn't actually looking at the image. I was going off of what I remember I saw, which is a really bad place to, or a really bad habit to have. So let's go back and actually look at the drawing. And then this comes down. I feel like there should be a cheek. Like he doesn't show the far side cheek, but I really, I think he just, either I can't see the line because of the the um, the drawing or like maybe the print's really bad or something. Let's see. Let me get the corners of the mouth in here. And the bottom lip.
So I feel like this cheek should come over like this. And then catch into the chin. cheek actually or the uh, chin curves here then comes down then comes up again bring the mouth further forward I have it too far back yeah that's better okay then we come down to the corner of the mouth move that over a little bit That looks better. I'm not crazy about this chin though. Let me see. All right, that's good. Now let's come back over here and drawing a line up to find the inside corner of the eye. But I'm going to draw a sphere for the eyeball so I can just think about wrapping the eyelid around the eyeball. better and then the orbital bone wraps over and comes to the other side and I can erase that line
think that's pretty much it for him. The main main thing I think to think about, or one of the main things, is the tip of the nose in relationship to the other far side eye, and and seeing how things overlap, like this orbital wedge shape, kind of almost like a triangle right here for that far side um, eye socket, and how it it connects or the lines intersect the um, the bridge of the nose and looking at the tip of the nose in relationship to those points. And yeah, I think that's it. Let's see, uh, let me fix the top of the head. I feel like there's too much showing in this perspective. Feels better if I cut that down a little bit. Yeah, maybe even more. Some indication of the throat anatomy, but not much. And I think that's it. All right. Okay, the next guy. Pretty much straightforward, looking directly at us, but at, with a head tilt. So starting off with a circle again. do is pretty much cut the sides off after we find the head tilt. So with my pencil in front of me, I'm going right through the eyebrows and find the head tilt. And then I'm going to double check my mark. That's pretty close. And then the center line of the face. The cross of the face. It gives us the head tilt, kind of like the angle and what's going on. And so now, well, let me, um, before I cut the sides off, well, I can go ahead and do that now. I'm gonna come in at an angle. So I'm gonna slice them off, but kind of coming in, instead of straight down, it's more like a angle. So instead of just straight, it's more in and down. And then the hairline for him, Looks like about right here. Uh, top of his hair would be about here. So here's the hairline, brow. Let's do the bottom of the nose. But the reason why I made this a little bit lower is because he's got the hairline actually up here and it kind of curves like this. So I'm looking more at this distance and then this distance to be equal and to the bottom of the chin about there so now we have a pretty good indication of what's going on with the head tilt um, next I'm gonna go ahead and do the overall head shape so I'm gonna come in with the cheekbones which is almost almost matched up with the bottom of the circle. It doesn't always do that. Um, I might make it a little bit higher. And then I'll bring that down almost to the chin. And we get that, that front plane of the face. And let's see. And then the jawline comes out from that cheekbone because his cheekbone looks like it it's further out like this and then overlaps the start of that jawline the jawbone and 
let's make sure the angle of the jaw matches up with the other side. I'll just bring those further in. So I'm not keeping, when I do these heads, I'm not like exactly how he is doing it. Um, basically I'm going for the overall concept, but um, I have so many, like I've done so many of these that it's really hard <laughs> not to put in uh, some of the Riley rhythms, like this one right here for the brow. It's where you sweep from side to side. And that's really what I love about the Riley rhythms is that it, it teaches you to track from one side to the other. Even if I didn't put the mark down, like let's say I didn't have this mark, but I would use it for the eyebrow. And I might come over here and then, see my hand is tracking over, it's not drawing, but it, it's making that movement. And it helps lock in um, the different features of the face and look like they're um, they're set like they're constructed strongly and they attach to each other they're they're on the same um, head they're on the same uh, oval shape of the head and turning the turning around and instead of like having one eye a little high one eye a little bit low you want things to look like they're all connected together so let's do the side of the nose. This is the blocky shape of the nose, which I like to do before going into the, the details. Let's clean that up a little bit. And then you see a little bit in this drawing, he has a side or the um the underside of the nose plane, it's very subtle. It's hard to see, at least in the, um, the image I'm looking at. Then I'm just gonna do the big, the big round cartilage, main cartilage of the nose. And you can see he has indication for the uh, nasal bone, it comes in like this. Then this is the glabella shape right here. This this like keystone wedge shape between the, the eyebrows. And actually let's go down, let's place in the ears. So I'm gonna just go from the bottom of the nose from side to side, left to right. And then the top of his ears, they're actually off in his drawing. The, this ear is higher but we're gonna make ours right on the same line from side to side. And then come in at an angle. And his guy looks like he has attached earlobes. off the shape of the hair I mean that side plane of the head kind of you can really now see like the shape and structure of the brow ridge and if you want you can even come in here sometimes you see this you'll see this this shape of the brow ridge and then it kind of has like this divot or lull right here and sometimes you can really see a perfect circle in people's foreheads and other times it'll be a square shape it really depends on the person 
Let's put in the eyeballs. And I'll come back to the eyes. Let me do the, actually let me do the neck, the overall head shape. So neck sweeps over here. And then he has an indication of that sternocleidomastoid muscle. That might be the attachment to the sternum right here. And then there'll be, so this side is the stretching side. This side will be the pinching side. So you've probably seen that um, on Stan Prokopinko's websites and videos. It's like the bean shape, or one side is stretching, the other side is bending, and it creates this pinching on this side, like this. So this concept is really important, uh, especially in figures, but you can also see it in this neck over here. So this would be, let's see, the uh, pinches right about here. And then again with the, the V-neck. And let's do the mouth. So the, a lot of times, um, at least when I first started drawing faces, oftentimes I'll make the mistake of making the mouth halfway between the nose and the chin. And it's actually closer to the nose. So if you're gonna like error on one side or the other, error on the side that's closer to the nose. And the corners of his mouth, pretty close to the outside of the nostril. And then we can come down here to the philtrum. And then the cupid's bow. And I really made his lips <laughs> really small. So let's make them a little bit wider. Let's come down at an angle. I don't know why I thought that they were so close underneath. Let's see, let's come in over here. And then the bottom lip. And there's a nice, like a little shelf underneath that bottom lip. And then we have the rhythm for the chin. So as usual, I added a little bit more than what we see in the Loomis method. I'm pulling from other things I learned from the Riley method and who, God knows what else I, learned. I picked up at uh, Watts Atelier. They, they're so awesome over there. They have all kinds of um, uh, resources and they study it from just about anybody. And let's see, let's come over here, the hair shape. And let's finish this drawing and find the inside corners of the eye. So I'm gonna go pretty much straight up from the nostril to about right here. Come straight across, make sure I got both eyes on the same on the same plane. It, this is so important. This is like drawing portraits 101. Get the eyes on the same plane. If you do nothing else, and and the only thing you remember from this video is getting the eyes inside corners on the same plane, you've done a great job. Just just try to remember that. It's really good. Um, basic concept that will save you a lot of hassle and heartache when you have to like redraw something because <laughs> you a lot of times it'd be like for me it was if I looked at a drawing like a portrait I did and I was like yeah it's pretty good yeah and then I see it in the mirror and for some reason looking at your image backwards in the mirror you can see the mistakes and for me it was like always one eye was 
too low or too high and that would be the thing that would pop out. So just get it on the same line right away and everything will be good. I'm just coming in hitting these hitting these corners here a little darker. That's pretty much it for this guy. Again with that concept of one side stretching, that'd be this side of the bean, and the one side pinching like this side here. And that comes that comes from uh, Stan Prokopinko, Proko um, ch uh, channel on YouTube. And he used to be one of my teachers, one of my first teachers over at Watts Atelier. Really cool dude. So check out his stuff. I'll put links in my uh, video below. And uh, I'm sure you've seen his stuff already. He's like, he's like all over uh, uh, YouTube. Really good videos. Let's see, he's come down here. And he didn't really indicate anything about the neck or anything down here, the throat, but. All right, I'll, all right, all right, all right, I'll let this one go. Next one. Okay, so this guy is looking down with a head tilt, and he's got, he's kind of got a pinch in the neck. So starting off with that circle and then trying to find the cross of the face. And his brow is pretty low. You see a lot of the top of the head and let's look for the center line across and then the top of his head the center line curves around and his hairline is pretty high up we're going to see a larger forehead in this perspective and here we're going to see the tip of the nose and then the bottom of the chin about so let's go ahead and get that shape of the the eyebrows and then the orbital bone from side to side. And we're, we're looking down at the nose, so we're, gonna, we're not going to see under the nostrils. And starting out, I'm just going to do a very blocky shape of the nose. structure indicated there I'll come back to the eyes so here we have the orbit orbital bone and then the forehead curves around, comes down, attaches to that. And right underneath that pops out the cheekbone. And we can do the sweep from side to side. And do that side plane rhythm for the temporal, temporal zone. Let's see.
cut that sphere in half. And come up at this angle. And if we came with the nose across on that plane to this side, and then came up this way, then we can, we can find the ear falls in that quadrant. And to check or check our placement of the ear, I'm going to hold the pencil up again to like the bottom of the ear horizontally and see where it falls along the nose. And that matches up pretty close. And the top of the ear, same thing, horizontal line, and it's pretty close. And we don't see this far side ear at all. And let me just get the overall head shape, the hair. And let's do the mouth here. So the top of the mouth is going to be close to the tip of the nose in this perspective. Back to the eyes. I'm just going to re establish some of those lines. neck let's not forget that so this side is not pinching at all this one come down creases right here comes around and of course on the back So that's pretty much it for him. So last head of the plate seven. Let's start off with a circle. And so the brow is pretty low on that circle. And it's at this angle. And let's double check that. Looks pretty good. And then the center line giving us the cross of the face again, something like that. And then 
that would wrap around the top of the head, come down the center line of the face. And let's do the thirds of the face. So again, because of this perspective, the forehead would be larger than the other thirds. So the hairline, maybe it's about right here, probably a little bit lower. Let's see. I'll put it about right there. And then the brow line, of course. And then bottom of the nose, which is actually the tip of the nose. And then the bottom of the chin. And now I'm going to come to the glabella shape between the eyes. And then, then I'm going to use like a blocky uh, shape for the nose at first. So let's get that, the ball of the nose. And the wing of the nostrils. Let's make it more pointy. of the bony structure of that cartilage of the nose and his brow and right about here is that side plane change and we cut the side of the sphere off Here, cut that sphere in half, and then half again. And then the jaw actually comes in more of at an angle. And then this side, actually, let's do the brow ridge from side to side, and then that side plane. Let's get his cheekbone, same on both sides. And then his jaw. Actually, let me fix his nose. I don't really like that shape. I have it too. It's like, it's totally symmetrical, but at this angle, it's not. It's, you'll see more of this nostril than the other. a little bit better and let's come back over here to this jaw see the cheekbone I think I need to bring this side of his head closer let's see let's see I think I had it at a wrong angle anyway more like that and then this comes in then our ear much better and then if we come over here and do the ear on the same side on that same plane
side to side. Let's do the hairline. And just think about the plane change. Like the hair comes over and hits that side plane of the head and then comes down, and then down again, and then over to the ear. So it's like this boxy shape. Kind of like really sharp angles right here and the mouth so the lips are going to be close to the, the tip of the nose let's get the corners of the mouth and then that cupid bow and the bottom lip and then the rhythm for the chin Let's go over, over here to the eyes. Oh yeah, let's do his neck. Don't forget the neck. So the sternocleidomastoid is kind of because it's holding his head up, it's flexing, so it bows out a little bit. You see the trapezius on this side. And again with that, like that, um, that jelly bean that we did earlier, where it's pinching, and like on this side it's stretching, this side it's gonna pinch. And then we come up here. So this head, Is a good example of your basic Riley head. And now, next, we're going to use a photo reference and draw from an actual person utilizing some of the things that we learned from the Riley, or uh, excuse me, the, the Loomis method, which is mainly getting those thirds of the face and getting the features to line up on the same plane and thinking about the side planes of the face and just the overall structure. So let's move on to the example. Okay, now for some fun. Now we did all the hard work, all the uh, the warm ups with those heads, and now let's uh, draw from a, a reference. Let's see. So starting off as usual, and then looking at the angle of the brow. And he's looking up and his forehead's pretty pretty small. Uh, let's look up for the look for the center line of the face. And let's see, bottom of the nose, about right there, bottom of the chin, about right here. Let's see, let's put that glabella shape and then I'm just gonna, I see this rhythm right here for his eye socket, kind of curves. And then it comes over to the other side. So let's do that side as well. And then I'm going to get 
the angle of his nose. And the tip of his nose lines up to about right here. So the tip of the nose is going to tell us a lot about where things are lined up. So we have the nose here, we have the bridge right here. We can see the far side nostril comes out and attaches to the face. Um, and it creates this cylinder of the mouth. And let's draw the other side of the nostril. And I'm going to draw the underside plane of the nose. And I'm going to put, you can see in him a little bit of the bump of the bridge of the nose. I'm going to make sure I have that and then round the nose out a little bit at the top or at the, the tip of the nose. Just a little bit. Let's see. So something like that. And you get a little hint of this eyeball, but mostly this will be all in shadow. And now, since we, okay, let's go over here to the side plane of the head and build up the rest of the structure of the face before we get going on the features. <laughs> I kind of took off on that a little bit too, too soon, but that's okay. So side plane of the head. I'm gonna cut that in half. So this plane of the nose is gonna come over and then turn around to the other side of the face. And we cut this in half to kind of find that jawline. Very strong jaw. Let's see, so it curves here, and then it catches pretty straight until about right here, and then it's going to curve down again, and then the jaw is going to come over and connect very square and we're in this extreme perspective too so it's kind of cool to see and then the underside of the chin connects to the neck so the top of his ear if I take a horizontal line it's really low it comes to about right here so it looks like we're, we lined up pretty good Take the basic shape of his ear, attached earlobe, and let's see. So again, we have that cylinder of the mouth, and then let's place in his lips. Let's see. Well, actually, let me get the overall head shape before I do that. So I got the forehead. Let's get the, sh the hair shape in the back of the head. And then his neck comes out about right here. And curves down. Adam's apple. He's got a really long neck. Let's see. And then his jacket kind of comes out something like this. run that off the page and let's go to, back to the hair shape his 
really wild hair. <laughs> so that's gonna be fun to play with. Design. Let's do the hairline. So that comes over that side plane of the head again, comes down. See, now it's kind of mapping the ear a little bit better. Let's see. I really feel like just doing these Loomis heads over the last few weeks has really helped me. So give them a try yourself if you haven't yet. It's such a good exercise. I keep saying it, but it's so true. It's just like a really quick way to get better faster. Let's see. So I'm looking at this muscle here, the neck. Then it comes over. Kind of mapping in these shadow shapes. And it's really cool shadow on his chin. It wraps around. Really crisp right here, then softens up as we go around that jaw. Let's do some work in the eye here. So the corner of the eye is probably about right here. And I'm looking at like this line at the, that angle. And actually let me um, put some structure in the nose first. Okay, now back to that corner of the eye. Now we can see up and under the brow a lot. So I gotta make sure I have the distance here Correct. This is this is the top of his eyelid. His eyes are very not closed, but just kind of like they look heavy. Let's see. I can do that a little bit better. I should probably put that eyeball sphere in first, because that will help us and designing the shape. So now we come over, wrap around, using that eyeball sphere. Kind of design the upper eyelid. Let's erase some of those, those lines. So we have this nice shadow shape right here where it's a crisp edge on that cast shadow and then it softens up, especially up in the eye, top of the eye brow. So all this will be in shadow. I made the iris too big. So 
So this rhythm comes all the way over and matches up to the other side. This is pretty much all in shadow. Let's see, let's put some hard edges over here on this hair. Got a lot of soft, and but also got to look for those hard edges. Cast shadow. Let's bring, let's change the shape of it a little bit. There we go. Crisp edge right there. Let's do the mouth. So right underneath the tip of the nose, let's do the philtrum. And then the cupid's bow. And it looks like the corner of his mouth would be about right here. And this curve, looks like it curves right here. And I'm gonna drop that line off and leave like this broken space to help connect the upper lip to the, the face itself. I can do a hard line all the way through, but I kind of like it broken, so it kind of feels more, more like it's attached to the face. And then the other side, the other lip curves around, and then corners out there. And then the bottom lip, And you see that wedge shape underneath the bottom lip. And his chin is a little too big, too far out. So we'll just correct that. Bring this in. And then we still have to do the cheek. So you see the cheek at the tip of the nose comes out and then curves in right here. And then there's that outside of the muzzle line that comes out, tucks in behind the chin. So we have the muzzle line right here, the cheek tucks in behind the muzzle line, and then the muzzle line tucks in behind the chin line. So you get these overlapping forms that help tell the viewer what's in front and then in doing so gives it like a three-dimensional uh, feel. And just soften up that edge a little bit. I don't like that shape. Let me change it. I want to I want to bring a mid-tone to indicate the structure of the nose right here. But I want it to connect to the shadow shape underneath the eye. Cuz if you have like too many mid-tone shapes, shadow shapes that aren't connected to anything, they're just sort of floating out there by themselves. And it, it starts to create a, a muddy looking uh, drawing. Or not muddy, but dirty. It just looks smudgy. And to fix that, uh, you can start taking those mid-tones and shadow shapes and just connect them to other shapes around it. And that helps a lot. To keep the uh, drawing looking dirty. 
or smudgy. How's his ear? Let's see. Placement is okay. All right. So let's go ahead and just throw in some tone real quick. And I'm using the side of the pencil and pulling down. I'm not pulling up. I'm only putting tone down as I'm pulling down. And then I'm rotating the pencil at the same time. And that actually sharpens it up. So I don't have to grab another pencil or, or tune it up. You know, I can just keep drawing. So if I rotate it, it's going to be sharpening at the same time. And that's what's really nice about this method. Let's come down here. And the neck. And then the upper lip. And then that wedge. Bottom of the nose. That's pretty much it for him. That was fun. Get a little bit of a zygomatic arch right there. And then of course the plane change. Thanks for uh, watching, guys. Um, check out my Patreon page if you got a chance. I'm going to start doing live streams as well. And so now I have two tiers. The first tier is eight bucks, and then the second tier is 18 bucks. And the second tier has got everything the first tier has, which is the um, Wake and Draw Forum, uh, weekly videos that I don't post on, uh, on YouTube, and uh, and also includes the uh, the weekly live stream so look for that and uh, really appreciate you guys uh, commenting and liking and sharing the videos that really helps a lot um, so awesome and I really appreciate it and I hope you guys uh, draw along with me and let me know how it goes and uh, I'll talk to you guys later bye